Hello, right, in this video I'm going to take you through um, how to do custom control and specifically it's going to be a binary clock. So what you're going to do is create a custom control which is essentially all of these things and then you can manipulate them um, one at a time. Now a custom control, I'll put this form in design view, um, you, you'll end up with a toolbox item here called a bin column. And that's what you're creating. So I just drag that on, just like anything else, I can resize it. And then it's got, if you go to properties, you'll see it has things that you can see normally, but I also have this other thing called number value, which I'm looking for here. And if I, at the moment it's zero, but if I change it to seven, for instance, you'll notice that the 111, it's got seven. So it will change color depending upon property value that you, you actually set it to and this can be a really quite useful thing for your project um, things like that and it's, it's, it's deemed to be as an advanced feature so it's always good to be able to do something like this if necessary I mean these could be um, rooms bookings uh, things like that showing things like that I can't think of another example off the top of my head but you, you could in theory use it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this document here um, which is on eBrock and so it's going to work with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a custom control to the form. So I'm going to go right over here, Solution Explorer, um, add, and then new item, and then custom control. Now where is it? Do, 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 do. Okay, make sure it is um, custom control and not user control because I don't work too well. And then I'm going to call that bin column because it's going to be basically four bits uh, bin col. I'll do. Right. Now what I need to do is switch to code view because there isn't a design view because it just basically doesn't exist. Right. Okay, so let's make the code a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on there. So it's created a class for us. Uh, it's, it's a control, so it inherits from the control, um, and it's got the override on paint here, which we don't need to worry too much about that for the moment. Right, so we've done the first bit. Now, um, right, okay, so we've managed to do all of that. Now, what, what we're going to do now is, is add some stuff to our class, and it's essentially this stuff in red, so let's just copy and paste that. And control C, and let's make sure I get this in the right place. Yeah, so it goes in here. Okay, now what I've declared there this is a, a field. A field is just another word for a variable essentially that's local to this class. And then we have this. Now, this is called a property. Now, a property is a bit like a method that you can get on set um, fields. Um, I said I don't want to go into too much detail on this, but essentially it allows you to number value allows you to write to number this this field here number value and also um, read and write to it, and you can just say the control dot number value equals okay, and it, and and it works that way. Otherwise, you have to use what are called set and get functions or methods, and it's a bit more complex. Okay, now the the, the key feature is we've got this get here, and that just returns whatever that's worth. And number value is just going to be a value between 0, 1, 0 to 9. Um, if you don't do this dot refresh, it doesn't work at all. all right? So um, that's the first thing. So I'll just copy and paste it down. Now, OK, as it says, next thing to do is going to just run the program. OK, nothing happened because we didn't do anything. But I'll put the form into form design. You know, I should see in my toolbox here, I've got my bin col. Okay, so that is a control that's now being created just like any other control. Um, now, I can drag it onto the form, but there's nothing to see because I haven't really set it up yet. Okay, now, okay, well, I'll, um, yeah, I'll do it. I'll copy it across anyway. So, I'll copy it across, and there it is. Now, the problem is I will lose it. Now, hopefully, it's still selected. So if we go to properties, you should see um, number val. Um, 
Let's see it. There it is there. Okay, that wouldn't exist if I didn't have that bit of code here. I'm sorry, this one here, this property here. All right, so underscore number value is, is hidden. Right, okay, so we've now done that. So, okay, so it, it's easy to lose there, so I can get it back. Right, okay. Now, what we're going to do now is it says here creating a first rectangle. So, on the paint event for the class bin col or bin column in my case, um, we're going to add this code. So, after base on paint.pe, we do this bit of code here. Now, this is this is the magic of it. Right, so let's go back into our code. So, after the paint, be based there. Now, what's we done there? All we've done is created four points. Okay, x so zero x zero zero will be up the top corner there, and x will move along forty and down and, and along. So it's point there, 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 there. All right, so that creates four points. And then this line of code there says, right, okay, there's our points, um, which is an array. And then we just simply say, okay, then I'm just going to make a polygon, which is a mini sided shape. Um, if you only had three points, it would create some sort of a triangle, but we could have more than more than that point. So we can create as many points as we like. And then it just fills, um, just drawings them all up and then fills them in red. Now, um, obviously we, we want to see that happening. Right, so let's see now. If we go to our design now, will we see it? Probably not because I haven't saved it. So let's try and do a save it. Still nothing. Okay, let's just run it, see if we can see anything. Right, there we go. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay, so I just needed to run it. So yeah, you can see. I have my first rectangle. Okay. Right. So what I want is some more, those three more. Um, so that's that's explaining all the points on there. So essentially what I need now is the other three. So I'm just copy and paste this. So this is just moving them down, same sort of thing as before. So I could, you could create all sorts of funny shapes if you wanted to. So let's Paste that again and run it. Now, what we got now? Okay, good. Right, you can see my um, form isn't big enough there. Well, the this is my probably my Surface Pro scaling not working. Okay, there we go. So you can see this looks a lot bigger on here than it does on there. But that's that's my Surface Pro scaling. It's nothing not to do with anything else. Right. Okay, so that's good. So now we have our four rectangles. Now, what we'd like to be able to do now is changing the rectangle color depending on the number value. So if number value is one, we only have show that one, number value is two, we only show that one in red, the others remain gray. It's incredibly easy. So let's just do the first couple there, just to show how easy it is. No, let's do the first three um, or four even. Right, so um, now where's that going to go? That's going to go after the paint bit. So we're going to go back into my bin column CS file and whoops, I'm on the wrong one. Bin call. So that just joins, makes some more red. And now we're going to actually, I mean, you can argue you don't even need that bit of code at the start now. So if number value equals one, zero, it does that, one is that, two is that, three is that. Right, so we're saying basically light grey, light grey, light grey for zero, and then we're making the, the bottom one red, the second to last one red, and then bottom one, top two. So you can see how it's going to look. So it's red, red, light grey, light grey. Now let's just run it to make sure it works. Now it knows they were gone grey now because it's if you look at the code on the design here, no, on this one, you'll see that number value is actually zero. Let's run it again. There we go. So if I change that to three, look at that. Just changed it like magic. 
I change it to four, we'll say for seven. I don't think it'll do anything because it just goes back to the default because it's none of those things. So um, what I've got to do now is fill in the rest. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's go and do the rest of these. So I've now got them all. And I've got them on my screen. Right, and let's just try now. Demeanor. Let's go back into design and number value. Yeah, it's already gone to seven, so try nine. No problem at all. So let's put it back to zero. Now, obviously, you can change these at runtime as well. Now, what's the name of this? It's called Bing Column One, isn't it? I think. Um, oh right. Um, so, yeah, Bing Column One. So, if I put a button on here. Um, Right, so I could just click up um, through there. So I can just say, right, um, val int number equals um, bin column one dot number value. All right, so that just gives the value. We can just do number plus plus. Let's make this a bit bigger. And then we just feed it back in. So we can say bin call one dot number value equals number. Now, obviously, that will run out of values after a while, but let's just see. So click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then it's out of range. But we could easily change that. So there we go, there's the custom control. Now, the bit about the thing called a property, it allows you to do things like this. So we can just simply say, well, that equals that, and also we can set it as well. So if that was a, what's called a, a, fun, a method to get a value, that would have brackets after. So that's the central difference. You'll notice that when we have an object, which is your bin column one here, then we have the property. But if it was a method, it would have bracket set. Don't worry yourself too much about that. That's fairly straightforward. But there we go. So that's how you create a custom control. It's incredibly easy-ish, I would say. Um, but it is quite powerful and it can cut down quite a lot of code. So potentially we have all the code to do the drawing actually on the object itself and we just supply it with values and it just makes your life quite easy. Okay, that's it. Thank you.